Camp, thank you for coming on today. How you doing? Yeah, good man. Good, good. Living Sorry. the life? Oh, okay. you know it. Living the dream. <laughs> I'm loving the beard as well, we are just saying, obviously off camera, beard brothers. I mean, mine's uh, got a while to catch I up with yours. I didn't know I was going to be on video, man. I would have, I would have like, got it all properly quaffed for you, make it all... No, I never do that. It's just <laughs> a scraggy mess. I'm it's lazy, right. what can I tell you? <laughs> It's all right with your with your poor internet, as you stated. You can't really tell anyway, so I suppose that's a perk. <laughs> ah, good. I did it on purpose. I put like a slight grainy filter over my lens there. <laughs> Actually, I just clean the lens. Maybe that's what it is. Ah, it's just paint all over my laptop, so it always looks like shit. <laughs> that, that's probably no better. It's dirty um, more. Look at that. It's like a, I've got like a halo, like a haze. <laughs> that's just gonna be as good as it gets. So right, it will do, man. It will do. Um, so for people listening, um, they're obviously tuning in. They might not know who you are and what you're about. So uh, tell the people that are listening what you do and uh, your background. Yeah. Uh, so I'm a figurative uh, artist, a painter. I paint in oil, and uh, I paint sort of uh, narrative scenes that are. Uh, sort of hooked around a, uh, a story that I write. So, I mean, really, to, you've got to sort of see it to understand what I'm doing. But uh, if you imagine the uh, sort of old school Caravaggio, Rembrandt y style Renaissance painting, I paint in that sort of style, but I do it in a sort of contemporary modern narrative, you know, around, I don't know, gangsters and, and crime noir and all of that sort of stuff just the sort of movies and tv that i really love that's the sort of artwork that i sort of base my stories and paintings around cool man um i mean I, when i checked out your instagram i was like damn like this guy's like talented massively talented because your your art no. looks so real i was just like how <laughs> how does he do this um and then i was just wondering like <laughs> what like why did you why did you get into art in the first place well, so I'm a, principally I'm a story, I guess, that's what I sort of figured out that ever since I was very young, that's really been my jam to tell interesting stories. And, you know, back before all the internet, and I'd still be writing stories and drawing pictures and telling stories through whatever medium that I could really get into. And um, it just turned out really that painting was a way that I could try and tell an entire story in, in one image. So, you know, it was kind of like a natural progression and I'm very sort of visually based even when I'm writing, you know, I, I see the whole thing happening and it's, it's almost like I can't get the words out quick enough and, you know, I can't tell my stories as well through sort of descriptive narrative writing as I can through a painting. So that's, that's really how it evolved into, into me being more of a painter than a writer. So, you know, it's really all around the storytelling vibe. So when you when you obviously younger, you kind of did you establish that you had this like talent and was able to, you know, paint or, or draw better than a lot of normal normal people because obviously what the work you're producing, yeah. um, not I don't think many people can. Not replicate. really. No, I'm not, it wasn't like one of those sort of like rain man like people that can just draw brilliantly you know from their mind and just they're, they're just fantastically good from the get-go i was always drawing and i guess there was a bit of talent there obviously to get you know to get the momentum up but there was definitely not a case of like that i, I stood out massively amongst sort of any of my peers i just really enjoyed doing it you know i was always just doing it really for entertainment you know make people laugh and little cartoon drawings and things like that it wasn't really that you know, I was this crazy savant type person or anything. And I work really hard to get the sort of results, you know, that I get. I can't just, you know, I'm not one of those people that can just dash it off with special superpowers or anything like that. <laughs> Most, you know, maybe I, maybe there is a secret superpower there. I just don't feel like that. I feel like I have to work quite hard at it. No, I mean, it doesn't seem like um, something that's easy. I, I can imagine it to be quite time consuming. How long does like a usual uh, painting take for you man that is like bro that is the question i get asked so much right <laughs> and i always uh, and the thing is and no it's fair enough because you know i, I get it I, I would be interested in that as well but it's really the painting bit is 
just a little bit right at the end. It's like that whole iceberg analogy, you know. It, what goes into it beforehand is the whole concept, the writing the story, coming up with it, and hiring the actors, and you know, finding the location, and then doing all the sort of compiling and stuff in Photoshop, and trying to get really strong imagery, and and then the actual painting bit at the end is kind of almost like the relaxing bit. You know, you've come up with all the idea, and everything is all it's all there. You know, it's all done. So when you paint, it's you're literally just like, Bleh! it all just comes out. And you know, when you've done a zillion paintings, that last bit isn't that time consuming or that difficult compared with the actual conceptualizing the whole thing. So, you know, painting, I could do one in a day, you know, a small sort of head study of sort of, you know, fairly rough and loose, just getting an idea and understanding someone's, you know, how they're put together. But uh, like a big multi figure painting that's, you know, one and a half meters wide can be sort of three weeks of just grafting every day for you know eight nine hour days so mm. it's just it all depends really on, on what i'm doing still it's uh obviously i guess the work that you need to put in before is i guess like must be the most time consuming thing then which is obviously like what yeah. you touched on that's so, months yeah i was gonna say does it take like months or weeks and uh i mean it must be mad to be able to visually because obviously I've never been able to. I've never been able to do anything like on that level. To, so to try and understand like the mind and how you see it is like, you know, fascinating to me. It's like, how, what what do you see when they're there? Like, how do you see the story and get this across? Well, it's it's bit by bit. You know, it's um, you'll it, something will trigger an idea for a story. It could be. It could be anything. It could be like you're waiting for a mate at a club and you see someone a bit shifty putting a bag down next to their table. And then you start going, I wonder what's in that bag. I wonder who he's meeting. Maybe he's paying someone to kill someone. Maybe he's got, maybe it's full of diamonds or cash or, you know, there could be any number of things that start going through your mind. And then you think, well, how could this be an interesting story? How can I move this on? So loads of things just trigger what you're you know, what you want from a story, what's compelling and that sort of thing. So that sort of incubation phase takes quite a long time. And that happens every time I go out, every time I walk down the street or when I go see, you know, a film, something will trigger and one of the, maybe one of the sub sort of characters or subplot in a film, you'd be like, I wonder what their journey could have been, you know, and that will spark something off. And you start jotting little notes down and maybe making a few sketches and, oh yeah, oh fuck, this could be good, yeah, this is all right. And you start telling a few people, what do you think of this story? And then they start going, oh, yeah, that's quite cool. And so, you know, you start getting little bits of feedback like that. And then gradually, bit by bit, you then write it all. And I write in play format. Cause that's simple. Because I'm a bit simple-minded, really. I'm not, I'm not very good at big flowery narrative text and stuff. So I find it quite easy, uh, or quite easy, Mark, uh, easier to write in a sort of screenplay format of, uh, you know, dialogue and brief descriptions of the scene, where we are, what's happening, kind of thing. And and that's really where I start. And that actually ended up being really helpful for when I then go to cast the actors, because I can hand them a screenplay and say, look, this is what we're trying to achieve. So, um, How do you yeah. manage your... I don't know what question you so I went off <laughs> So how, how do you manage your, um, like, creativeness and your imagination? Because like you said, obviously, you could be walking down the street, you could be in the cinema, how do you like kind of rein yourself in from not going off on too many ideas at one time and kind of bringing it down to one or do you just pick the best that you feel most connected to and then roll with that it's, one? yeah it's uh, it's really uh what happens is that i remember uh, i don't know if you've read it or anyone, i'm sure many people who are listening are probably uh, stephen king's on writing it's like the greatest book on literally on writing that there is it's all about Stephen King's process and the way he works and he talks about notebooks being just a way to collect loads of shit ideas and uh, it's the ideas that just keep coming back and revisiting in your mind that end up being the good ones so you know I used to keep notebooks and that and then when I read that I just stopped doing that and just the stories that are really good are the ones that just keep coming back. You know, you'll be having a cup of coffee and that one story will just keep coming back. And you think, actually, you know what, that, that could actually work. Because quite often <laughs> in the past, I'd have this idea and I'd write it all down and go, this is the best idea ever. This is fucking amazing. <laughs> and then <laughs> you go and look at it like a day later and you're like, what was I thinking? That is just terrible. And so it's the, the way that I manage it is that, I don't sort of get super excited about any specific idea that I'm having. They'll just 
the good ones seem to just keep sort of floating back again. You know, they come back and go, oh, yeah, yeah, that could work, that could work. And by the time you're actually writing down, you've formed it in your mind quite a lot of it's already happened and you'll be telling it to someone in the queue at Starbucks or whatever and they'll be like, what, what is, why is this guy talking to me? you would be like saying, well, yeah, what do you think about this? You know, or whatever, and I'll just be just seeing what their reaction is, to whether or not it's a good, good story, are they interested, you know, that sort of thing. And that's how I sort of keep one idea over another one. Who's been your uh, biggest influence so for, for your artwork and that? Well, so yeah, there's various influences and different sort of aspects of the, sort of the creation process. In painting, you know, I still look to uh, the old masters for their handling of, of light. You know, that's that's something that I the the obvious ones are like Rembrandt and um, uh, Van Dyck and uh, John Singer Sargent. I've got various people on my walls in the studio who I look to for that. But there's a lot of contemporary artists. Uh, like Sean Cheatham and Jeremy Mann, these American figurative painters who are really fantastic, who I look to, Hollis Dunlap. Um, and then in terms of like storytelling and that sort of thing, it's really, it's all cinema. And, uh, you know, I look at a lot of cinematographers like Roger Deakins and look at how he handles light and how he creates drama in film and TV when there's no, there's no speech, or there's nothing. It's just his composition and, and lighting that have made this really uh, impactful image that, you know, could stand alone uh, as a story, um, and then like uh, David Fincher, as you know, I really like his films. That sort of thing inspires me deeply. But you know, it's, it, there, there are so many amazing filmmakers that it's sometimes a standalone piece because so many people are involved in the production of that film that naming one person. I mean, everyone always talks about the director, but there are obviously so many people involved in creating that project to give it the full impact. So, um, yeah, I mean, really, it's film that I draw the most inspiration from. Mad, man. Because I would have, like, put my house on you to be, like, oh, yeah, an artist, a, a painter, da, 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 and you've gone with the, the, the film route, and mm -hmm. I think that's quite cool. And you get that, I think, from, from your work as well. Like, it's when I was looking at it, obviously, I'm like, this just looks like a movie scene, you know? They're all in, like, their suits and jackets, and they look a bit mafia, mob bossy. I was like, man, this is cool. Like, it's kind of... Um, I don't really know how to explain it in uh, art terms, but you know, it's got like well, this... Well, that's the vibe, man. Yeah. It's like modern that, day mafia. That's exactly it. That's what I'm looking to do. Yeah, that's, so that's, I'm glad you said it because that's, that is what I'm trying to achieve. You know, and for years I thought maybe doing all that was a bit of a cliche, you know, and I thought, well, you know, really, I'm just not that sophisticated in terms of like making social commentary with my art and all that sort of thing and, and intellectualising and going deep. And when I was sort of gave in to the fact that I just love telling stories, that I just really want to sort of evoke emotion and drama and have people see one of my paintings and want to be part of that and step into that world, then I, you know, that's when I really found sort of my, my vibe, my jam that I really wanted to get into. And, and that really is when things started getting, going well for me. When I stopped trying to think, oh, what, you know, how can I uh, create some great intellectual piece, you know, of, of art? And I was like, you know what? I'm, I just really love high tension drama and action and all of that sort of stuff. So when you start getting authentic and realizing that maybe I'm just not that deep or that clever, then, you know, that hopefully that comes through then in the work yeah. and people see it and can identify with it a little bit more. Well, yeah, I mean, it works for me. I mean, I'm not, I'm not going to claim to know that I know last, like loads about uh, art. Like, if I'm standing in an art gallery, I'm not like, oh, yes, this fucking painting was uh, made in 1952 <laughs> by blah, 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 and I can really sense what's going on here with the image. Like, I'm kind of like, like you would mm. say, a little bit more simple with, with what, I'm vi what I'm seeing. I'm just like, yeah, this looks fucking cool. Like, some guys dressed up, looking fresh. It's, like, modern, but got this, like, mafia sort of gangster vibe. Um, and it just looks fucking cool, and I appreciate it, do you know what I mean? Rather than trying to go too deep, where I'm just, like, my my mind's just frazzled now. Like, what are we even talking about? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> but, um, yeah. No, it, exactly. It is a pain sometimes. Um, so that kind of touches on, I guess, what is your, like, current art trend? Uh, well, I don't really know what, what you really mean by trend. Are you, are you saying, like, what, what's the sort of work that I'm doing at the moment? Or yeah, yeah, the... yeah. Yeah, sorry, yeah. Yeah, is it all still... Okay, cool. Well, 
Go on, yeah. <laughs> uh, well, I've just finished a series of paintings. I've just finished a series of paintings for a show uh, next week, which is going to be at the Ritz, and the Ritz in London, in the casino, which is under the Ritz Hotel on Piccadilly. And uh, it's like a super high-end casino where... Like the night before I did a, a, my photo shoot there, um, some dude won eight million bucks, you know, playing Baccarat. It's that kind of super mad high end sort of stuff. And so I'm doing just a small series of six paintings um, that, you know, it still has that sort of crime sort of feel. So, of course, it's more sophisticated because we're at this really high end casino. Uh, but I've really enjoyed that. You know, I wrote the whole screenplay out again. There's five characters in it and um, you know, hopefully I'll be able to tell this, this story in just six paintings uh, so I'm really excited about that uh, then next year uh, I've got another big show that I'm going to prep for and this time what I would like to do is I'm actually going to make a short film, like a 15 minute short um, hire all the actors and everything as I usually do but this time I'm actually going to have proper cinematographer on set with proper lighting, proper everything um, and, and actually make the film um, and then do the paintings from my own sort of short film uh, and then show the film you know, in a proper sort of cinematic environment and then as the film fades to black we'll have the paintings on the walls you know, light up so people wouldn't spot the scenes from the, the, the film they just watched. Oh my God, that's that thing, that's that. And at my shows, I always get the actors as well to come to the show so they look like they've stepped out of the painting. They're wearing the same stuff they have been in, in, the, uh, in the paintings. So I try and create this whole immersive sort of feeling and that's, um, that's my trend, if that's what you mean. <laughs> no, and how, like, the... the um Oh shit! I've just gone totally mind blank now. I'm so sorry. Um, so obviously you're gonna Did do you know the. Did you know halfway through my bit of monologue? No, no. I had a really good question as you were going through it, and I was like, I've got to ask it. And then you know, and it just go. <laughs> the idea just goes bam, gone. Um, it was to do with the. So obviously you're gonna make the film. Is there any sort of genre you're going going for with that? Well, yeah. Again, it's it's all really sort of thriller, high tension, high drama um, type of things because that's the kind of films that I really enjoy at the moment. Not that I'm against other sorts of things but that is really what I'm interested in doing at the moment. So this, the story is still in its sort of development phase at the moment but it will be along the same sort of lines as the sort of things that I've done before. Um, there'll be high stakes, you know, there'll be the, the typical... Uh, you know, obstacle and intention storyline where someone's trying to, you know, get over some particular obstacle and, and um, you know, and changes for the better or worse as a result of that. So, you know, there's, there's nothing too sophisticated about it, but it will hopefully be really uh, a very sort of exciting, fast-paced uh, short film. Yeah. I've got the question now that was in my brain is, do you know anyone else that's doing, like, similar work to you or doing similar ideas, you know, with this... Like, because your your story's interesting. Obviously, you started off like with this creativity, and uh, this creative period. Then you did like, and then you're doing the paintings, and it's all about your subject. And now you're thinking, right, I'm going to make a 15 minute film, and then I'm going to do the paintings of the scenes of the film, and have all the cast and their clothes. Like, do you know anyone else that's kind of producing these sorts of ideas? Um, well, I'm sure there must be, <laughs> but I'm. I'm not immediately aware of uh, of anyone in particular who's doing it this way because I don't know why. I think maybe it's just because it, it's such a lot of work. You know, either you're a filmmaker, either you're a painter, and that's why I said you know, at the beginning that I I start to really sort of identify myself more as a as a storyteller than just a painter. And it, because of there's the writing element, and there's the photography element, and then there's the you know the the film side of things, and then the painting, and all of these different sort of formats of, of telling the story. So I don't know. I, I guess it's I'm not aware of anyone specifically doing it this way, but there must be other people doing it. I don't try and look too closely because I don't want to feel like I'm ever sort of copying anyone or doing anything. I try and do my own thing and. Hopefully it's original, but even if it isn't original, you can't worry about that. You know, you've got to just do what you really enjoy, what you love, and don't worry whether someone's done something similar because everyone's done something else similar to you before. You know, there are no yeah. truly original concepts. It's everyone's just robbing off everyone else. So, you know, I try not to look too closely. 
Oh, if anyone is uh, is doing it, they're copying you, mate. Don't worry, you're not copying them. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> you set the bar, in my opinion. You set the bar. But yeah, no, I yeah. agree. Like, uh, there's so many people mm. on the planet. You know, a podcast in, in its own is like a fucking. There's about a billion people doing a podcast. It's just like God. Like, <laughs> and then trying to make your own one authentic. It's like, well, it's it's authentic because it's you, but someone else is probably doing it and doing the same yeah. sort of thing as well. Um, how do you like price your work as well? I've always been wor- like curious with art. It's like how how does it get valued? How do you value it? Mate, no idea. I don't value it. The uh, gallery does it. I'm represented by Clarendon Fine Art, and they uh, you know they pick up my work and they decide on the pricing and, and what the piece is worth. And you know, with every show, the prices go up and. You know, they, seem to keep going up and up and I'm always so horrified, you know, when I see it because it's, you know, I can't believe it, but it's, I mean, it's wonderful, but I, I don't understand it. I don't get it. It's great. I love it. But yeah, it's a mystery how, how it's valued and, and how people decide what piece of art is worth. I really don't know. Imagine if you just snapped at me and was like, dude, I'm just the fucking storyteller. I'm not the guy who prices that shit up. <laughs> just going <laughs> mad. That's what I wanted to say. <laughs> I'm just sitting here like, okay, mate. I'm sorry. <laughs> so, do you ever do you ever like struggle to to part with your work? Obviously, because you put a lot of time in the, into the creative process and then painting it. Do you ever struggle to like get rid of it and and sell it? Do you keep pieces for yourself? No, I can't afford to keep pieces for myself. <laughs> but um, I, uh, I now once it's done, um, I'm, I'm happy to see it go because I've managed to sort of. I I'm, I realised quite a long time ago that you can't control what people think of your work, right? You you have no business controlling what people think of your work. All you can do is create a piece of work that's in your head that you love and tell the story that you want to tell. And then you have to love that process. You've got to love the journey, man. You know, it's a bit of a cliche as well. But if you don't love that, then you're fucked because the result, you might think you've created the best painting ever and then no one likes it, then the whole process has been a complete waste of time if you haven't enjoyed creating it. So by the time it leaves my studio, yeah, sometimes I'm a bit sorry to see something go when I feel like I've really nailed it. Um, but it's, the moment is fleeting because if you get you know, obsessed with that result and, that, and the reaction of, of the general public to your work, then you know, I feel that's a recipe for real unhappiness there because it, you just can't control it. You know, that's, that's the thing with Instagram, right? You put on Instagram what you think is a really great piece of work, but then it's this little flipping tiny little thing on the digital screen and people just like, bleh, straight past, don't give a shit, you know, they might hit like, they might not. And if you, if you depend on that affirmation of whether someone likes it or not, then can you imagine all that process, all that shit I was telling you earlier that I have to do before I create that painting? It's all been wasted. So I try my best. I mean, obviously, I still get a little bit like, what the fuck, man? That's a really good painting. But, you know, it's very fleeting. I mean, there's many other things when it comes to to Instagram, like their algorithm and shit, it's not reaching enough people and you're just are not we're dependent on like that that like to almost cl- like give us clarity that our work's good and obviously we forget that we have like the hindrance of it not reaching all your followers and not reaching people when you post it at one AM in the morning and most of your followers are asleep and then you're like, Oh man, I only got ten likes on that photo like and i've put all my fucking heart and effort into that bit of photography or whatever and we can get disheartened by it so i think that's a good message and you said is as well it's like what you're saying it's like don't depend on that shit enjoy the process and if you enjoy it the result at the end from other people you, you're not really too fussed do you know what i mean yeah absolutely My so <laughs> what do you use like to help with with your creativity i know like do you, do you drink or something before, like, I don't know, fucking get high yeah. or whatever? Yeah. <laughs> do you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> no, not really. Um, no, I mean, uh, I got into CBD oil for a little bit. That seemed yeah. to be, like, quite good and calming me down a bit. But then, uh, you know, like I ran out and then never got any more. So I was like, oh, maybe it didn't really, you know, do much. And, um no, I'm, you know, one of the things that, uh, there's a book by Stephen Pressfield called The War of Art, 
which is an amazing book that I recommend for anyone who's in any kind of creative endeavor to read that book. In fact, I did an interview yesterday <laughs> with some people that came to the studio, and I was uh, pushing the war of art again. I was like, God damn it, Stephen, you should like give me commission because I'm always pushing this book. Um, because it talks about being uh, a professional, you know, showing up every day, 8 a.m. or whenever, for me, it's 8 o'clock in the morning, I'm in the studio, and then put in a full day's work and not be waiting for the muse, you know, waiting for the creativity to strike or whatever. Just crack on, you know, get on it and get started and push through the day. Sometimes you feel miserable, sometimes you feel amazing, you know, sometimes it really flows, sometimes it doesn't. And that's really important to get into that habit of just doing it at a fixed time every day, get down to it, get it done. You know, because if you are taking something or relying on something to get that creativity going, you know, when that shit runs out or you can't get hold of it, you start panicking, you know, oh, I haven't, I haven't had my morning coffee, I can't fucking work today. You know, it's, there's any number of things that will stop you from working. And uh, Stephen Prescott calls it the resistance. And you can feel the resistance creeping up on you. You know, I'm not feeling so great today. I had a bit of a late night. Maybe I'll have an easy morning, you know. And it's, there's all these little things that are trying to stop you from cracking on and getting it done. And, um, yeah, again, I forgot completely what the question was, but hopefully <laughs> something in there was useful. <laughs> what, what do you use to help with your creativity? And I think you nailed it anyway. It's, just, it's basically yeah, your... your uh, your mentality and your routine, like, you know, turning up at 8 a.m., being there, bang. Unicorn tears, there's the secret. <laughs> Don't fucking exist. People Great. ask me, they go, what brushes do you use? What paint do you use? What this? And every time, I'm just like, oh, man, seriously, if you think that's the, <laughs> that's the fucking, you know, way to do it, it's just like, oh, so I just make shit up every time. You know? Yeah. I go to B&Q and get a, a massive bucket of red paint and uh, I use yeah. a, a brush with toilet roll on the end and it just comes out yeah. like this. Yeah, try it, kids. Let's get it. <laughs> so what's your, what is your favourite thing about being um, a storyteller? Like what's, your, what's the biggest plus for you that you just get to share your message, that you know, you're occupying your time, all of those things? Yeah, it's a bit of everything. I mean, it's a total rush, right? I love telling these stories. I get so sort of sucked into it that it just does not feel like work to me at all. And once I'm like getting, once I've start got an idea together, it's this mad roller coaster. You know, when I'm actually painting, I'm talking to the characters in the painting. I'm so like into what I'm doing. It's it's just such a flipping blessing. It is my blessing and my curse. <laughs> it's you know, it's one of those things that you just you can't not do it once you start doing it. So I absolutely love it. But of course, it's scary when you're, not, you're worried that the idea might not come or might not work or, you know, so there's ups and downs. But I think really it's, um, yeah, I don't know what the question was. Something about, yeah, what? <laughs> don't worry. It's early, you know, it's early. It's cool. <laughs> I've been painting this morning. I was like, oh, like in it, and I was like, oh, I've got the fucking JD. Come on! And I just like get out of that zone. So that's cool. And how did you turn your talent into something you could earn money from? So how did you turn your storytelling? What was the process behind that? Um. So uh, let's see. So I've been selling paintings for a long time, just like little commissions and bits and bobs that I was doing and that. And then um, it wasn't really until uh, Clarendon um, approached me and uh, offered to represent me that uh, I started to really make, you know, some decent paper. That was really the sort of turning point. And I was a bit reluctant to begin with because I was totally in control of what I was doing, but I was working two jobs, right? So I couldn't be like a full-time artist without the gallery representation. And uh, so the way that I really, you know, it was the decision to go with a gallery because a lot of artists moan like hell about galleries and, the, you know, they take quite a large cut of, of your, you know, work and, and that sort of thing. But there, it's without the gallery, it's very, very difficult to focus on the bit that you're actually good at, which is the creation part, right? They pick up my paintings, they frame them, they put them in their galleries around the country, they sell them for me, they take all that headache away from me. So, you know, that's the conversion, was agreeing to go with a gallery and sacrifice initially quite a large 
you know, portion of, of the return from selling a painting. So I think, you know, without that, I wouldn't be able to focus on everything that I'm doing. So I'm, I'm in debt to the gallery. So when they take a big chunk of it, I'm like, yeah, good. You, you do an amazing amount of work for me. And, um, you know, I couldn't do it without them, really. Yeah, that's nice, man, because obviously, like, it saves you a lot of time. So it allows you to actually be more creative again and, and get more work done and get more shit done rather than kind of having to worry about pushing your work on to, to an audience and, and trying to get sell it for for money so you can actually just keep going <laughs> so that's yeah always nice. exactly your internet connection is like jumped up a bit now which is great everything oh, sounds no. everything sounds clearer i can see your beard properly now it's great <laughs> how's that side um, profile <laughs> looks good <laughs> so what's uh what's been your biggest achievement so far um Shit, you know, I don't really stop to think about it. I, I think it's, um, I, th I just had a big solo show uh, in Mayfair. I mean, that really, that still haven't, hasn't really sort of hit me that that might be quite a big deal. You know, the front of the gallery, it's, it's on Dover Street, off Piccadilly, you know, right opposite the Ritz, like right in the heart of Mayfair. And the front of the gallery was was completely like vinyl wrapped with one of my paintings, huge. Then with like, you know, my name and shit and like, bah, bah. and then like 30 paintings in the show and, you know, hundreds of people came to the, the opening night and I had a poker table in there and with all the actors around it, that was, that was the theme of the whole show. And I made a short film to like of a guy telling the story of what happened that night at the poker game where the paintings are based around. And that was, that was quite a big deal, you know, uh, sort of only afterwards I thought, yeah, you know, Jesus Christ, you, you never would have imagined having a solo show in Mayfair. And then it's just, it's just happened, you know, and pretty much all the paintings sold and it was a lot of money changed hands, you know, I, and it's only really the last sort of few days because it finished uh, on the 24th of this month. And I guess that's probably the biggest achievement is putting that whole thing together. You know, it was like 19, uh, characters and uh, one of the paintings was two and a half meters wide had all 19 people in it which I've never done a painting that big before and it was I guess all of that was um, you know because I don't really stop you know to think about it it's only afterwards I thought well, actually maybe maybe that is quite a good thing you know to have done that no massive you know man. I think if you stop and think too long you might sort of might freak you out a little bit you know how am I going to do that again kind of thing no nah, man, like you got to give yourself a pat on the back every now and then, dude. Yeah, exactly. Because <laughs> uh, that's that's like a phenomenal thing to to achieve and to to do. I mean, most people, like people going to college and studying this, you know, this stuff, and they're they're never going to achieve. They might not. A like, majority of them are never going to achieve that. Do you know what I mean? And be there, in mm. blunt, money changing hands, and it's all your story. You know, so many people. So I think. That's like cool that you went. You went with that because obviously I know you won um, Artist of the Year in 2017, and I thought that might have been your. Uh, yeah. Thought that might have been your biggest achievement. Nah. <laughs> I don't how care you, about that kind of stuff. Yeah, I was gonna say, how did you feel about that? And then obviously now you've just answered it in one word. Whatever. Yeah. No, it's a great privilege. It's a great privilege. It's, I don't know. Again, like that's like someone else's decision you know, on that. And so that's why I don't tend to let, you know, I don't really enter art competitions and things like that because I just feel like, you know, it's a sort of a, the road to despair if you don't, you know, keep entering things you don't win. And, uh, you know, and if you you look at those awards, they're obviously they're lovely to get. I don't get very many of them at all, but I try not to think about that sort of stuff. I try to think about what's the best possible work I can do because that's the only thing that I can control. You know, I can't control whether someone picks me pick me please you know, give me an award or, or something you know and then of course when you get one you're like oh thanks very much <laughs> but it's it's definitely not high on my uh you know list of, of stuff to to achieve. to achieve yeah how do you how do you maintain like uh because like you've got quite a positive mentality you know you're always like motivated and, and going obviously i know you're going to have that everyone has shit days you know what i mean but mm. how how what's your mind like how do you manage your mindset most of the time like do you do any meditation or workout or, yeah. 
you know what yeah i do. do i meditate every day it's been a um i've been doing it for about three years now and it's it's really helped that whole mindfulness practice stuff has really helped hugely in recognizing when the sort of down periods come the self-doubt which ha- happens every day you know you have moments where you think oh my god how the hell am i going to keep this going how am i going to do this it, it's it can paralyze you if you don't spot it coming you know and then you know, you're like oh shit here it comes yeah no and then practice that whole gratitude of well what have i achieved so far what have i done and um, this will pass you know i can do it and a lot of sort of self-talk of, of looking at what you have achieved so far and that even if it were to all end tomorrow you've done some good stuff you know you've done some good work and it's stuff to be really sort of grateful for and you know i have a great family i have a lovely home you know i've got lots of stuff that i'm really really grateful for and i think that's what keeps me really grounded in those moments where where i can slide into depression because you know of course i can't imagine not being depressed you can't appreciate the highs without the lows kind of thing you know so yeah, it comes all the time, all the time. Yeah, it's interesting, right? Because I'm I'm the same as like so many people will have that. They'll be in that negative mindset, and I kind of will talk to them and say to them like, "Man, you need to like start telling yourself some positives, like some things you're grateful mm. for, like the situation you're in. Like you may think it's shit because you're not where you want to be, like sitting on a yacht drinking martinis like a James Bond villain. But at the end of the day, you've got you know a lot more." than a lot of other people have so um, I mean I recommend meditation to so many people I meditate myself I'm like meditate it's good for you like it's a vacation Mm. for the brain you know like you're awake but your brain's just away like with the fairies or whatever um, form of meditation people want to take on so yeah I, I, I can agree massively agree with you on that it's like if you can meditate you know find 10 minutes a day to meditate and even if it's just about focusing on what your day is going to bring in a positive way yeah, it can only be good. What do so... you use? Do you use an app or anything for your meditation? I used to use uh, Headspace for a bit, but now I just put on some relaxing music and just sit here and count my breaths. And then eventually I'm not even counting my breaths and I'm just, I don't know. I'm like asleep, but I'm awake. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. so strange, so strange. What about yeah. you? Yeah, I used Headspace for a bit. Uh, and now I'm using Calm, which is I find really good. Um it's one of the because it has like this daily mindfulness like 10 minute thing which is really easy to achieve you know and uh and there's a reminder you know and so those apps i find really actually quite good because i get into a routine you know for doing it and uh you know and you get like these streaks as well you know so you don't want to miss a day to break that streak you know so mm-hmm. it's uh it's quite a good one to uh, and i hear that sam harris has got a really good app coming out i think it's only on ios at the moment but um, I'm going to check that one out because Sam Harris is a bit of a guru, you know, and all of that sort of stuff. So I I reckon that's probably worth looking at. I wish I could get him on the podcast one day. Who knows? Oh, yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it would be interesting. But no, I mean, um, the head the Headspace app was good for a while, but I don't know. It's uh, Something about it just steered me off. I don't know whether I just listened too much of the, like that. His voice gets annoying. Yeah. Well, welcome to Headspace. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, fucking Andy Pruitt, whatever his name is. Yeah. Breathe in through the nose and relax. Think about yeah. all the positivity in your life. <laughs> yeah, he's a it's bit. Like, he's a bit too happy, clappy. Yeah, I need. I need kind of my own uh, thought processes to to take over. Like for me, that's just what works. For me. Yeah, I yeah, need to sure, sure. Myself with stuff. Um, so it's interesting. Uh, but what do you do other than than art? Um, <laughs> stop storytelling. Stop yeah, storytelling. I, um, well, I've got two boys, twelve and nine years old, and uh, I like to hang out with those guys and my wife. And uh, I run in the hills a bit, and then other than that, I'm out on the town with mates and with all the various people that I'm sort of photographing and and things like that. I I have to get out of my studio, otherwise I go insane. So I'm. I'm out on the town tonight taking all the people from the gallery out for a meal, you know, just a thank you for all the hard work they did for my solo show. So I try and get out as much as I can because, uh, you know, it's important to get out of the studio and interact. And, you know, that's where inspiration for new stories and things comes from is getting out there as well. Yeah. How do you manage your time with your family and your, your work? 
or your passion, should I say, because it's not really work for you now. Yeah, yeah. well, it is work, it is work, but it's um, the way I manage it is, uh, like I was saying with, from Stevens Pressfield, is just be a total professional about it. You know, start at eight, try and finish by like 5 30, 6 o'clock, you know, and, uh, and treat it like a proper job, you know, clock in, clock out, so that you still maintain some sort of normal life with your family, you know, and go and, you know, hang out with the kids and do other things. And, you know, I'm really strict with it. I work in really strict 90 minute blocks, you know, have a little break, 90 minutes block, little break, you know, go and do, you know, throw a kettlebell around a bit, you know, go for a run, go try it. I really very, very serious, very, very sort of regimented with how I work. You know, so I do keep it, you know, I'm not off the fairies and shit. Yeah. How did you like develop that mentality as well? Like by, cause I, I, is it something do you think people either have or don't have as in like that routine aspect and being strict? Cause there's so many people I know they're they're like, yeah, man, I want to be successful in business. I'm getting up at 6am and then they'll like work for two hours and then they're like, fuck it. I'm going out. <laughs> You're like, what? Yeah. Uh, I think that if you want to be successful, uh, a successful creative, I think that you're stacking the odds in your favor if you are professional about it, about you, you know, decide to get up and, you know, work a solid day. And uh, if you're just waiting to when you're creative and asking about a lot, I think you're you're stacking the odds against you, really. It's 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 definitely a job you know it's something that i had to learn to be like that through doing other jobs and having a family if you want to be an artist uh it you know 99 percent of artists don't make any money at all and i'll probably work in a second job like i did for many many years and so you have to be really strategic with your time and if you want it bad enough you will create a program whereby you will work at certain hours when you can and make sure that you turn up every time that you know i was painting at 4 a.m for years like learning anatomy you know doing like life drawing from youtube and just like just keeping it going sketching all the time you know learning color theory doing online courses in the states and stuff and then going to my day job and then coming back you know and doing some family time and then doing some more stuff in the evenings you know if you want it bad enough you you will try and create a program whereby you can achieve it loads of people are always bitching they haven't got enough time it's like well you've got to put a strategy together to find that time yeah. so um interesting yeah i don't know if it's a case of right you're either like that or you're not it's like well either you want it or you don't yeah how badly do you want it you know yeah like, are you willing to give up your shitty habits and your excuses to achieve what you want yeah. to achieve or are you just gonna sit back and let time fly by you know and uh, yeah I, exactly. I, i'd agree as well like i think that can like being consistent is like such a key factor is like sticking to it once oh. you've planned it you know how us how many people go off the rails off they can't stick to something that's achievable because they're like i'm going to work a million miles per hour for the next two weeks and then i'm going to be fucked for like four months <laughs> so yeah. uh, you're not going to get shit done that way either but yeah um no. Is there anything you'd like to add at all? Because uh, I'm I'm all up on questions, so. No, mate. It's been a pleasure. It's been lovely to talk to you, and uh, uh, you know, obviously, go go and check my shit out. You know, um, what's my Instagram? Yeah, do my Instagram. Link it or something. It's yeah, at yeah, Vince well. Camp. KMP, go and have a look at the stuff if you like it. Let me know so that when I'm in my miserable periods, I can say, "Oh, look, someone cares." Yeah. <laughs> but. Uh, <laughs> No, that's it. No, I, I really like, I just want people to see what I'm doing and to enjoy it. And, you know, and if you enjoy it, then let me know, because I love to hear about it. You know, it's, uh, you know, people say, if you're a true artist, you wouldn't have to show your work. Well, that's bollocks as far as I'm concerned. It's like, what is the point in creating something special that you can't share, you know, and uh, uh, I, I think it's actually important. So yeah no it's true it's like some guy busting his bollocks in the gym to get absolutely in sick shape and ripped and then just never taking his top off like, what, what was the <laughs> point what was the point just go eat go eat the cake man do you know what i mean just go uh, eat the cake eat it was the wasting cake. time uh. yeah. but no um i'll link all your uh, all your stuff below anyway so uh, people can obviously click on it and, and check out your work um yeah and other than that man I, I really appreciate your time it's been been fun i don't think i've laughed so much on a podcast if i'm honest uh, <laughs> it's been really good it's a shame your uh, internet didn't start great at the beginning 
Oh, well, yeah. never mind. It is what I'm it is. sure as people can hear it. I'm just talking shit anyway, mate. I mean, really, <laughs> you could probably edit most of it out, but I think you've just streamed it, so it's out there now. But Yeah, sorry. It's already live. It's, it's done. It's out there. To Doesn't the, matter. Uh, to the fans. I don't care. But yeah, no, yeah. Um, thank you for that. I'll talk to you off camera anyway, so just for a couple of minutes. Right. Um, but yeah, the links will be cool. down below in the video. Uh, thank you for coming on. Yeah, yeah.